Let's cover one last example of steady state error. For this example, consider a mass spring damper system as a mass that is lights on a plane with friction B. The mass is connected to a spring with the stiffness coefficient is K. A force F of S is applied to the mass and the output is the displacement X of S. The objective here is to apply a force to the mass and make it move by a certain amount. We can consider an open and a closed loop approach. Let's just start with the open loop. We know that the transfer function x, the displacement divided by the force, is 1 over ms squared plus bs plus k. So x of s, the output is f of s divided by ms squared plus bs plus k. And let's assume that the applied force here is simply f over s. f is the magnitude of the force and 1 over s is the step function. The final value of x of s or the position the mass reaches is the limit when s tends to 0 of x of s times s, which is the limit when s tends to 0 of x of s. Here it is. f of s is f over s times s from the theorem times 1 over ms squared plus bs plus k. And this gives f over ms squared plus bs plus k the final value of the displacement or the maximum displacement in this case that the mass reaches is x steady state equals to f over k. If you now want the mass to reach a certain position, let's call that xd for desired position, we can define the force that it needs to be applied as xd times k. And now with this, this relation, we can define the open loop control approach. The input is the desired position xd times k, the stiffness constant, which serves as our control gain here. This is applied to 1 over, over 1 over ms squared plus bs plus k and the output is x and here is the force applied so with this analysis we inverted the model we know that if we apply now f equals to xd times k x will tend to xd and the error in the steady state is equal to zero this only works provided that our control gain here has information about the plant, knows exactly what the value of k is, and we, in this way, revert the model so that the mass always goes to xd. This open loop control approach works, provided that we know the model, we have access to these variables, and there is no disturbances applied to the system. If there is an external force acting on the mass, this relation doesn't hold. The open loop control approach doesn't hold. So we need to consider a closed loop control strategy, strategy instead. The objective here is to develop a closed loop control system to make the mass move by a certain amount by applying a force F of S. Let's call the desired position X of XD of S, the desired displacement. And now in a closed Loop controller, we need to compare x, d, the desired position, with the actual position, create an error function, and send this error to the controller. Let's create a block here. We'll deal with that later. The output of this controller now goes to the mass spring damper system 1 over ms squared plus bs plus k, and the output is x of s that we are measuring and inputting it here. What goes in this box? Let's assume that our control strategy is to apply a force to the mass that is proportional to the difference between xd and x. Let's call this proportionality constant kp. The force is here, is what comes out of this block, is applied to the mass, and the mass moves by x of s. We can now imagine this as giving a command to the mass to go from 
the current position 0 to position xd, this distance times kp is f. So the position, so the force you apply to the mass will be very high at the beginning, and as the mass approaches xd, then the force decreases. What is the steady state error in this case? Well, the closed loop transfer function is x over xd, and this is kp over ms squared plus bs plus k plus kp. The error is simply xd, the desired output, minus the actual output, which is kp minus ms squared plus bs plus k plus kp times the input, which is xd. We can factor that out. And now let's give the system an input x of xd equals to a certain displacement. Let's call that displacement a small x. x over s. x is the desired displacement, the magnitude of that displacement, and 1 over s represents the step input. We can find now the steady state error by setting the limit of e of s times s to 0. And this is xd is given there, x over s times s times this entire function. And this simplifies to k over k plus kp. This is now the steady state error. Can we make the steady state error zero by changing our gain kp? The answer is no. There is no way the steady state error will go to zero. Why is that? Well, let's think again on the idea here of having the error or, or having the force being proportional to the error. If the mass starts at a position zero and you want the mass to go to position xd, at the beginning, the error is very large. The control effort, the force that comes out of this, which is proportional to this error, is very large. The mass then starts to move. And as the mass starts to move, this error decreases, the force decreases. What happens when the mass reaches xd? If the mass goes exactly to the position we want, then error at that point becomes zero. If the error becomes zero, then the force becomes zero. There is no force, there is no force applied to the mass, and the spring will pull the mass back. So the steady state error can never be zero. If the steady state error is zero, there is no force applied to the mass. According to the relation that we have here, according to our control strategy, it can never go to zero. Because once again, when the error is zero, the force applied to the mass is zero, and then the spring will simply pull the mass back. So in order for a force to be applied, the error here needs to be different than zero. This is the only way you get a force applied to the mass. And the steady state error can basically never be eliminated. It can be minimized. The greater kp, the smaller the steady state error. But the steady state error will never be zero. Now let's reconsider this example and let's get rid of that spring. So let's open the circuit there. And let's get rid of this spring. So there's no more spring here. Now k equals to 0. If there is no spring, k equals to 0, we are now left with a mass damper system. So this k goes to 0, and this k here goes to 0. Which means that the steady state error goes to 0. Why is that? We want the mass to go from 0 to xd. The force is still proportional to this error, to the difference between these two. As the mass starts to move towards xd, the error decreases, the force decreases. When the mass now reaches xd, the force becomes zero because the error is zero. What happens at that point? Well, at that point, 
the spring is no longer there pulling the mass back. Once the force is zero, friction will simply let the mass stay at that location and there is nothing pulling the mass back. And in this particular case, then the steady state error can indeed go to zero. So did we choose a bad controller here for our mass spring damper system? Not necessarily. This is a, a decent controller. The steady state error can be made very small. We can fix this issue using a different controller. The solution to this would be to add an integral controller here, but we'll deal with that in a separate lecture.